if phone number, then we use this pattern. Otherwise, so we could have another if and then email. And then there we go. Now, if we want to extract, for example, names or any other piece of information based on a regular expression, you can see that we need to embed a bunch of if statements. What's going on, guys? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Migos Code. In this video, I want to show you the right way for you to use abstract classes. So abstract classes are so useful and I still see people not using them in the right way. Last week, or actually two weeks, or maybe three weeks ago, I think, we spoke about solid principles. And basically, you'll see how abstract classes enable us to write better code. So just have a look at this example here, where we have one class with some common functionality. So here, maybe this class is responsible for opening the file, reading the file, and then we basically want to produce some kind of report. And here, this will be an abstract method so that all of these different implementations, they can just basically change a slight variation of the main functionality. And then at the end, maybe you want to send the report via email. Now, this is the example that I want to go through with you. So I don't want to teach you about cats nor dogs, because yes, those are really simple examples that you can understand. But like you're not going to be uh, writing cats, dogs, shapes, squares, rectangles in in production trust me you, you you don't do that right so let me teach you uh with a with a real example so this is something that i i, I try my best to, to write and uh, show you the benefits of abstract classes so abstract classes as you know they cannot be instantiated they cannot be instantiated and within abstract classes you have abstract methods and abstract methods they have no method body and they have to be inside of abstract classes or interfaces have a look so in here let me start with this animal class so that you understand so here abstract class animal and inside we can have abstract methods in here so no implementation then maybe cats so can they can override this implementation dog as well they can override the uh, implementation and have their own behavior then within main in here so we can initialize the cat or dog as follows but what we can do is say animal, animal equals to new and then animal. Because at this point, it doesn't really make sense, right? So you've got an animal, okay? But what animal do you have? Is it a cat? Is it a dog? Like what kind of animal do you have, right? So this is why you cannot instantiate. So this actually, so I primarily did this example so that you fully understand. But now let me show you the real power of this. So let's say that in here, we've got this number extracted report. And by the way, this is actually part of the uh, course, which I'm almost finishing. And this will be part of the uh, bootcamp. It's the mind boggling. Yes, bootcamp. So I'm going to leave a link where you can basically register for the bootcamp, um, you know, especially for the last months, a lot of people have managed to secure jobs, especially at Amazon, which I'm going to basically uh, make a video on that. His name is Sai. So this actually pushed me a lot more to, to build a bootcamp where you can come in and learn and then go off and basically secure a job. So that's the, that's the main goal. But anyways, let's have a look at this class in here. So we've got, we've got number extract report. So here, parse, we've got some uh, regular expression going on. We've got the output. We read, or oh, actually we create the file. Then we read using the scanner. We skip. So we skip the header with scanner.next line. Otherwise, if it doesn't have, then we return an empty file. Then we read the file. We get the next line. We match according to our regular expression. And uh, if it's a match, we add it to the file. And at the end, if it's blank, then we say empty file and then out. Then we have also another method, prepare and send report. So here we basically are mimicking, uh, you know, starting the report, parsing, printing the report, sending the report, so on and so forth. So here, if I run this, so I just want you to see that uh, we have just numbers and this is of this file in here. Have a look. So this file called data.txt. So here we have the header. We've got some text. We've got some names, numbers, emails. We've got some gibberish in here. And basically this piece of code just goes through this and extracts just the numbers from this file in here, skipping the header. Now, let's say that we want to basically also get the emails 
hello at amigoscore.com or support at amigoscore.com. So this is not a valid email, by the way, as of yet, but this is this is a valid one. So let's say that we want to basically have the ability of also printing that uh, separately, right? So you can see it's starting the report and then the report was sent in here, right? So what you could do is you could go to uh, number, extract the report, change the class name to something else. And in here, basically have a look. So you then need to have another pattern and maybe call it an email pattern. And then you would say, right, so at this point, if, so at this point, if the one that I've selected, so maybe if, and then phone number, so this is not valid, but I'm just giving the, the gist of it. So if phone number, then we use this pattern. Otherwise, so we could have another if and then email. And then there we go. Now, if we want to extract, for example, names or any other piece of information based on a regular expression, you can see that we need to embed a bunch of if statements. And if you remember correctly from the video for solid principles, a class should be closed for modification, but open for extension. If you if you forgot that video, just go back and explain this. So here we are violating this rule. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to abstract all of this. We're going to create an abstract class. We're going to have a common class with common functionality. And this is what really abstract classes gives us. It avoids code duplication and increases reusability. And the purpose really is that we can have a class that acts as a base for subclass. And then we can encapsulate some of the functionality or common functionality in one place and let subclasses implement the differences. So the difference here will be whether it's a phone number that you're looking for or something else. And basically what we want to do is this right here, have an abstract class and then have these subclasses implement the differences, the differences. So let's go back to IntelliJ. All right, cool. So in here, what we're going to do is let's basically uh, create extract a report. I'm just going to duplicate this for now. I'm going to call it extract a report. Okay. So let's have a look at this class and see how, how we can improve on this. So here, the pattern. So the pattern here, we want the subclasses to be able to provide us with this pattern in here. So let's just get rid of that. And what we're going to do is the first thing is actually, I forgot. So we need to say this is an abstract class. And within abstract classes, you can have abstract methods, but also non abstract methods. But here we are missing this here. So let's just have a method here. So we're going to say public. And this will be pattern. So pattern. And then I'm going to say get and then pattern. There we go. And end this with semicolon. Now, here, I want this to be abstract. I want the subclasses to override this. So here, abstract. As simple as this. Now, at this point, I can just say get and then pattern and problem solve here. Now, the other thing is I want maybe for these classes to tell me what kind of report that they want. So here, let's just say public and then abstract and then string. So maybe the names get report name. So get report name. All right, cool. So nice and easy. And at this point in here, I could just basically say starting report. And maybe I can just add the report in there, right? So I can say plus, and then get report name, plus, and then basically the three dots. And then at the end, let's just do the same. So I'm just going to copy that. And then remove those three dots, space, paste that, and then and that's it. I think that's it. We just leave it like that. All right, cool. So this is nice and simple. So now you can see that this method is actually private now. So we can say private. And whenever we invoke, so this method will be the one that we basically need to invoke. But you can see that we have some hidden functionality in here. And this is common for all subclasses. Now let's create the number. So, or basically let's just use the number extract the report. So this now will basically extends and then the class. So extract a report. And now this is complaining because we need to override few methods. So we need to 
implement the get pattern as well as get report name. So let's just do that. And now, so for the pattern, I'm going to take this in here and I'm going to make it static. So basically just like that. So private and then static and then the pattern. So let me just put this on a new line so you can see. So we've got the pattern and uh, let's just say static and then final and then pattern and let's just give it a name. So pattern just like that. Cool. So now for the get pattern, we're going to return the pattern for the name. I'm just going to say in here phone numbers, phone numbers. There we go. So that's, so that's the name of the report. And so for the parse functionality, basically we can get rid of all of this. So we can get rid of all of this and the same with this. There we go. So now have a look how this class became super simple. So let me actually test this just to prove that it works. So let's just go to uh, main and in here. So you see that we have new number extractor and then we have access to prepare and send report. So if I run this, you can see that we have the exact same output. Have a look. So this is basically the phone numbers in here that we have. And one thing to bear in mind is have a look starting report and then numbers. And, and this is basically the abstract method that we did override, but also the pattern. Now let's say that we are interested in emails. So all we do is we basically create a new class. So Java class and then email and then extractor report. There we go. So this now will implement or actually extends and then our class. So extractor report. And we need to override two things. So the pattern as well as the report name. So this will be uh, emails. So I'm just going to call it emails and then get pattern in here. So this now we can basically have a look at the regular expression for email. So I never remember this. So let me just copy from here. So this, let's just take this first and then put it here. There we go. But then for the email, so let's go to Stack Overflow. And if you type email regex Java, Stack Overflow, click on that one. And if you scroll down, you should see that they give you the uh, pattern. So basically, I never remember this. So I do always go to Stack Overflow, back to IntelliJ. And let me just paste this here. And there we go. So we can even test this actually. So within IntelliJ, if you want to test your regular expressions, so here, so because this is a regular expression, I can just basically press Alt and then enter, check regex, hello at gmail.com, and voila, you see that it works. So if I say dot C, that's not valid, uh, dot com, if I remove the at, there we go, also not valid, awesome feature that you should be using. Cool. So here we have the email uh, pattern. Now what we have to do is just return the pattern. So let's just return the pattern and job done. Now let's basically go to main and let's uh, basically extract this to a variable. That's the path. And I'm going to do the same thing. So here instead of number, so this will be email report extractor dot prepare and send report. If I run this, voila, have a look. So this actually, <laughs> let's just say south here and uh, run again. So have a look. So now we have, so the one for phone numbers and then the one for email. So this is kind of nice. Have a look. This is so nice. So we are using an abstract class to have some common functionality and then the differences will let the subclasses implement. So now you can see that the class is open for extension. So this is solid in action. Now, the other thing is, have a look. So this email here, right? So here, email is all capitals. So maybe let's say that we want to clean every single line that comes out from the report. So again, so instead of us fudging the other class, so instead of us fudging, for example, extractor report, so instead of us fudging this and having a bunch of if else, no, we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do is the following. So we're going to say public and then abstract 
this will return a string and then clean. I'm going to say clean and this will take the string. So let's just say input. There we go. And now, so let me just put this like that. So now, so here at this point where we append the line, if it matches, we're going to clean. So we're going to clean the next line, which is basically what we are after. Now we can let subclasses basically decide how they want to clean each input. So let's just go to email extractor. So here we need to basically implement the method. So clean now here. So all I want to do is have a look. So I want to basically have all of these to lowercase. So let's just say input dot to lowercase. There we go. Let's open up number extractor format. So here implement methods. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to return the input. So I'm not going to do nothing with it. So if I run this again, have a look. So now you can see that how we are making changes to this, but we're not necessarily having to have a bunch of if statements within the super class. So this is the beauty of abstract classes. And this could go on and on and on. If you want to send emails, for example, or text, you could say, for example, um, a method here. So email extractor. So maybe another, oops, <laughs> this one here. So maybe another uh, abstract class, uh, let's say um, uh, medium, for example, or send via whatever, right? And that could be a list. Maybe you want to send via email, via Slack, Discord. Uh, text whatever right and then you could have basically um, the functionality in here and then you can let the subclasses decide how they want to send their reports maybe they want to send to uh, just sms or email or to all of them so to be honest this is how to use abstract classes guys i hope that this example did make sense to you let me know what you thought about this video comment down below and let me know what you want to see next if you're not part of the amigo school community go ahead and join the community is growing and i would like to uh, see what suggestions you have and uh, yeah so for now i'll catch you on the next one assalamu alaikum